Dear students, uh, welcome and thank you for tuning in to this video of Stacks and Dynamics with me, Dr. Loyal Zobi. We are going to start um, discussing um, chapter 9, which is the center of uh, gravity and the centroid. So, uh, in general, actually, um, when we are looking at weights, weight is a force that is actually uh, act on and affect uh, the body. Or, the you know, it's a force that acts on uh, a body. We need to be able to identify the resultant weight, or what we call the total weight, and also we need to identify another important component, which is the location uh, of the weight um, in a structure. So, if you look at the image that we, t we are showing in this uh, slide, uh, this is a tank of water. So, for any shape uh, which we designed, it's important to be able to find or determine the center of a gravity. Um, we need also to, to calculate the volume, surface areas, and find the forces uh, of the liquid um, that, you know, um, tank will contain. So it's very important to understand uh, that knowing the weight and identifying it in a free body diagram uh, is important, but also as important is just the location of it, uh, because um, it's, it affects a lot of our uh, analysis and design. So what are the center of gravity and the center of mass and the centroid? And also how can we determine the location of these points uh, for a given, uh, for anybody that we're looking at in two dimensions and three dimensions? This is going to be the topic of the video, this video and a couple of more videos uh, that will follow. So let's dig in. Let's talk about the application that we mentioned. So if I want to design or analyze, uh, you know, this water tank, a structure like a water tank, so we need to know the weight uh, of the tank as well as the uh, water in the tank. And also we need to find, as I mentioned before, the location where the resultant force, which is the resultant weight or the total weight, uh, is um, going to be um, located. And so how can we find the resultant weight and determine these weights and also their line of action uh, for such structures? This is going to be the topic of this chapter and we're going to solve a couple of problems that we're going to, uh, it, which are going to, um, you know, clarify the concept. Let's talk another ap ap about another application. So um, we all like sport utility vehicles. And one of the concerns uh, for sport utility vehicles is that it might tip uh, over when you're taking it when someone is taking a sharp turn. So this is an example of the importance, uh, you know, of the finding, uh, you know, stability and identifying stability uh, in the SUV. And to do so, we are using some something called center of mass. And uh, if we would talk about the center of mass. Uh, where the weight of the vehicle will be, if the resultant weight or the total weight will be there, uh, should it be higher or lower to make this, uh, the, uh, you know, the SUV more stable? That's also a design issue that uh, a lot of engineers will encounter in their life, uh, lives. Also, so how do we determine the location of the center of mass? That is going to be the topic that we will invest our time and effort in, uh, in studying this. Uh, chapter. So let's talk about some concepts, so general uh, idea or uh, theory, the theory behind uh, something called the center of mass in order to uh, link it with what we learned so far in statics. So if you remember or recall from the previous chapters, we are uh, studying equilibrium and we were studying forces and moments, right? And so we're going to use these concepts in the, you know, formulating the theory uh, behind the, the determining the center of mass. So if we keep, again, um, forces, which is the weight and moments in mind, uh, this is how we're going to start. So our body is composed of an infinite number of particles, smaller particles, and um, you can see that in the figure on the top, we have this um, square uh, that has a weight uh, that we identify because it's infinitesimal um, is going to identify it and define it as dw. So uh, again, each body is composed of an infinite number of particles. Each particle is 
dW has a weight of dW because of the gravitational uh, force. And the dW has a location we are going to identify it as, uh, if you look at the top uh, schematic uh, by uh, x tilde, which is x with the uh, tilde on top of it, uh, y tilde and z tilde, and those are the locations of our infinitesimal uh, weight, right, dW. Now, the center of gravity is a point, uh, and it's often uh, we notate, it's noted as G, and it's located, it locates actually the resultant weight of the system of uh, particles or the solid uh, body. Uh, so, and that uh, G, that center of gravity, is going to be identified, if you look at the second schematic to your left, uh, is going to be identified the location of that G with X bar, Y bar, and Z bar. So we have two things now. One of them is the, in, uh, the infinitesimal, uh, you know, DW weight, which is DW, and it has a coordinates of X tilde, Y tilde, and Z tilde. And we have the G, which is the center of gravity of the entire system or body, and its location is Z, X bar, uh, Z bar, and Y bar. We're going to look at these in more details in the uh, following videos. But if we are assuming this, so keep in mind, a body is going to be composed with infinitesimal DWs, many, many DWs, and also we have one uh, center of gravity. So if we want to link these together, how we're we going to look at that? So from the definition of the result, a resultant force, we look. We need to make sure that the sum of moments uh, due to individual uh, particles' weight. So if you look at the top schematic, uh, and we have many of these dWs. So the sum of moments of all these dWs uh, should equal about a point should equal should be the same as and equal to the moment due to the resultant weight W located, located at G in the second schematic. So that's how we are uh, connecting these things together. Uh, the sum of moments from all individual small infinitesimal particles, DWs, uh, should equal and the sum, uh, should equal the moment uh, due to the resultant weight located at the center of gravity. And uh, that is the definition of the center of gravity. Also, we need to note something else. Uh, the summation is probably clear. And the other thing that we need to note is that the sum of moments due to the individual particles uh, weight about uh, the point G that we have located as, as the center of the gravity should equal to zero. So if you have all these DWs, the infinite, infinite number of DWs, and you wanted to find the moment uh, of each one of them and add them together, the moment of the entire number of DWs, the infinite, infinite number of DWs, uh, about G, the center of gravity, should equal to zero. That's a, another important concept. We are going to look at this more in more details in the class, and we're going to solve more problems, but also I'm going to have a couple of other videos following this video to talk more about the concept and how can we apply it in um, solving uh, and identifying, uh, solving to identify the center of gravity of different uh, objects, areas, and uh, volumes. Thank you for watching. Until the next video. Bye.